Today in the news, we got some Cooper Lake, some memory, and a little RDNA to take your breath away. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. Today, the company announced a brand new line of Xeon scalable CPUs with up to 56 cores. Wait, what? Didn't I cover that like a, a few months ago? Is a multi-chip module of two 28 core dies. That's 56 cores and 112 threads. Oh yeah, I did. The difference this time is that instead of soldering the CPU directly to the board, like it was the case with uh, the Cascade Late Refresh that was announced four months ago, the CPUs will be socketed. This new Xeon lineup will be based on Cooper Lake, AKA another plus to the 14 nanometer process, and it will feature B-Float 16. It's apparently a single precision floating point format designed for machine learning and near sensor computing. What is curious is that B-Float 16 will apparently only be featured in Cooper Lake and not in the upcoming Ice Lake Xeons. If a company buys into Cooper Lake though, at least they have the comfort of knowing that the new socket, because yes, it's a brand new socket, will be compatible with Ice Lake. Now, why is Intel announcing this without giving us any more information, like model numbers or clock speeds? Well, they were probably planning to announce this lineup a little bit later, but they might be scared straight by AMD. AMD's announcement for the full Epic Rome lineup with up to 64 cores is happening tomorrow. So they just wanted companies to, you know, keep them in the back of their mind while they spend their cold, hard cash on Zen 2. Speaking of AMD, we got a report from WCCF Tech that says that Lisa Su might be eyeing a job at IBM. Taking her place would be the newly hired SVP Rick that's right, Lisa Sue might quit to, no, I can't, I just, okay, I can't keep a straight face with this story. Turns out, unsurprisingly, that it's not true, as confirmed by Lisa Sue herself on Twitter. I mean, Dr. Sue made such an impact at AMD. I doubt she would consider leaving with the company doing so well. And since she got some family competition in the green team, there's no reasons to stop the phone right now, right? Moving on to some memory news, Toshiba, or should I say Kioxia, just announced something that we didn't know we needed until they showed it to us. Okay, well, need might be a bit of an exaggeration, but this new XFME drive or chips are a pretty cool concept. It's basically a modular NVMe chip that you can replace yourself. Imagine you have a thin and light laptop and the soldered NVMe drive fails. What do you do? Well, you'll have to send it back or pay for someone to desolder and resolder it for you. Well, with XFME, you'd be able to just pop it out of the connector and replace it. It's a neat concept, but it's going to need to be cost effective if Toshiba expects manufacturers to buy into it. What do you guys think about this system? In smartphone news, it looks like AMD and Samsung's partnership won't bear fruit for a few years. The deal made to allow some Radeon DNA architecture in Samsung phones definitely surprised me. And with the speed at which the smartphone market moves, I really thought we wouldn't have to wait long to see it. But in a Samsung's earning call yesterday, it was shared that, and I quote, the GPU technology will only start being adopted in products that will be launched two years down the road, roughly. Another reason for the wait is that Samsung probably plans on adopting the RDNA IP in more than just smartphones. I mean, Samsung makes smartphones, tablets, Chromebooks, laptops, even desktop PCs. And while the two companies said that the partnership would emphasize on mobile devices, that still leaves smartphones, tablets, and possibly Chromebooks. I mean, we are seeing more and more Chromebooks with Snapdragon SOCs after all. What we know for sure though is that that you won't see a Samsung RDNA GPU in your PC. According to sources at Tom's Hardware, AMD has built specific clauses into the contract that prevents them from creating devices with RDNA that competes with AMD products. Still in smartphone news, the design of the upcoming Samsung 5G Note 10 Plus has been leaked and I kinda like it. Well, actually, I don't like the pinhole for the camera, but that's personal preference. The actual design of the phone though, with the flat top and bottom and the super tight radius on the screen corners is really nice in my opinion. Since this is the Note 10 Plus, does that mean we're also gonna get a regular Note 10? Because if we are, that's a whole lot of flagship phones for Samsung. You got the S10, S10 Plus, S10e, Note 10 and Note 10 Plus. I mean, that's a lot out of the top. Next up, in gaming, we now know that a brand new Zelda Breath of the Wild game is going to be available in 2020. It features new characters, new enemies, and new dungeons, all in the cel-shaded style we know and love. Wait, where's Link? 
Oh, that's not a Zelda game, you say? You're saying that that's a PS4 game called Genshin Impact? Oh well, that explains it. During a promotion for the game at the China Joy Gaming Convention, a furious PS4 gamer smashed his PS4 in the venue as a protest for the uh, lookalike game. I have to admit, I do see the resemblance in the art style, enemy design, and even in the music. But this angry PS4 gamer protest ended up having the exact opposite effect with the comment section of the promo video filled with people wanting to buy the game after the news popped up of the guy smashing his PS4. I mean, it's probably the best marketing the game could have hoped for. All right, so that was a lot of news. If you've got any questions, comments, or subjects you'd like me to touch on, leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. I really need to stay frosty and turn on my AC because I am sweating profusely. Take care, boys. No, seriously, this is... C'est la canicule. C'est la canicule, I say.